Hello, Linda. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us and have a conversation about yourself and the Composers Conference. It's my pleasure. Thanks. Um, I wanted to know if you, if you could just take a little bit of time and introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, where you're from, and how you got into music. Okay. Uh, well, I'm a, obviously a composer. I grew up in New York. Um, but I live in Canada. I've been here for many years. Um, came here as a student um, and then stayed because I uh, started to get work and I always thought it was temporary but my husband's a percussionist and we had so much more work here because it was a smaller smaller city than New York. Toronto is, is um, was growing at the time and needed us in a way mm. that New York probably didn't. So we stayed. Um, but I got into music, uh, well, I was kind of, in a way, born to it because my mother was an amateur pianist, so I was hearing music from the get-go. And uh, I think having a piano in the house yeah. for children is kind of a marvelous, magical thing because it sounds amazing right away, and you can, you can play it, you can make it sound beautiful. So it was this giant magic box that I was always around. And I also had, um, because my mother was an amateur pianist, she had lots of records, records, LPs, remember those? And, um, <laughs> and my father had a lot of jazz records, so I, I was allowed to have um, one side of a record every night as I was falling asleep. And I had this just amazing stack of things. So. And as a child, I was a child, I didn't know Brahms from Bartok, you know, so I just, I just played what I liked. And often it was Bartok or Stravinsky and uh, some, you know, Bix Beiderbecke jazz and, you know, Charlie Christian jazz. And so just a real mix, uh, but I was hearing music a lot and, uh, you know, took piano lessons and I actually thought when I was in high school, I think I thought I was going to be a painter. But when it came down to that decision making of what do I want to do, I realized that what I was mostly doing all the time was playing music. And actually, I was already making up music. I started making up music when I was around nine or 10. I didn't know it was called composing. I just made up these songs. So I was always kind of doing it. And then I started off going to Stony Brook and they didn't actually, at that time, you couldn't study composition as an undergrad. So I was kind of treading water a little bit, but I met these grad students who were from Canada, from the University of Victoria, and they talked a lot about their school and how wonderful it was. I had no idea where Victoria was or anything. I thought British Columbia was in South America. I mean, you know, terrible. But um, I applied and went to school there, and it was, you know, a remarkable experience. Stayed there and did my master's there and studied with marvelous people. So I got nurtured at that time, and um, that's, that's kind of how, how it happened. And so when you, you, after grad school, you basically, then you stayed in, in Canada? or Japan? Yeah, um, my, my, I, when, I had already met my husband at Stony Brook, and so I went away for a while. And he was a percussionist in New York. And then our mutual friend moved to Toronto to start a rock band and asked my husband to join. So when I finished school, I just moved to Toronto. And we thought this was like for five minutes, you know, oh, he'll do the rock band and then he'll go back to playing percussion. Five years later, <laughs> we're still here. And, you know, many more years later, we're still here, but he, he then went back to being a new music percussionist and played with all the groups here and still does. And I became a composer here and, and started to make my life here. Um, and, you know, it was, a, Toronto was a place that um, had more room mm. for people like us. So I was an artistic director of a music group by the time I was 30. Mm. And that was like, you know, that's like a PhD plus, you know, yeah. it's like you learn everything from musicians, from other composers, and it was just a, a privilege to get that life experience. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a great, that's a great trajectory. That's great. Yeah. 
So, and you know, then I, I've just continued and, and as one does, you, you know, you kind of find your circle of musicians that like what you do and want to want more of it. And so you start to have people to write for, and then that grows and grows out of that. Um, so that, that was my, uh, main, main sort of musical trajectory. Um, and yeah, I think, I think that history, like one of the things that um, I did at Array Music was I started a workshop for young composers. I was still a young composer myself, but I, I had this idea that, and this is before computers, you know, we didn't all have computers back in 1988 when I was director. Um, but I, uh, I had this idea that if I could just have the musicians there to play through this little scrap of material, I would know if I was on the right track or not. Sure. So then I made a workshop that did just that. I, I had uh, a workshop where four composers every year would, would get selected to come and work with a set ensemble. They would get two hours a week with the ensemble for four weeks. So they have their two hours, try stuff out, go home, write music, come back the next week. And at the end, we would play through however much they wrote, whether it was 11 bars or, you know, an hour of music, we would do it in a concert. Yeah. And it was just um, such a wonderful thing, and it still exists today. Okay. Um, it's, it's been ongoing since then. I don't direct it anymore, but um, it was really uh, one of the first ways that I had of working with other composers in a facilitating role of coaching or helping them get close to what they really wanted to do, which is, I think, something that that I, I bring today, even to this, this situation, Composers Conference, that I have, a, I think, a good ability, I have a very open mind and a, a strong ability to get inside what another person is trying to make and try to ask the right questions to have them get what they want, have them understand what they're looking for, have them be able to articulate that, and, and even to push and pull a little bit questions around, around their, their form of expression. So, so it's really, um, I, I think I'm kind in that, but I'm also honest mm -hmm. and um, co-creative. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something that, um, that I bring in, in a good way to this kind of situation. And I'm also willing to back off I mean, you know, I'm very aware that everybody in this situation has three different uh, experienced composers coming in and talking to them about their work. So, you know, that's a lot for, for a composer. So, um, but I, I do feel like that's one of the things that, um, that I bring. And I think the other thing I bring is, um, and I, I, I kind of believe in this as a foundation, is a, is a sense of curiosity. Like, I'm very curious about what music can be and, and how can it change and how can we go forward in the art form and, and how can we bring the audience with us and, you know, all of those kinds of things that um, it's, it's just a, a living thing for me about, about um, where it can go. Like, we're, we're just all in our early stages and every piece I, I really want to take me that next step further. Yeah. So I'm very, um, I'm kind of always dancing on the edge of it could fail because I'm always pushing a little bit at my own limits, um, which is uh, something that um, I, I kind of hold that as a standard that, that um, it's okay if the piece doesn't isn't a hundred percent as long as you get to that next new thing mm -hmm. and the performers are a big part of that they can really help us uh, make something uh, they can help us understand what the piece needs to be and how it needs to go and Definitely. you know so we're, we're in that beautiful collaboration which um, which is something I'm, I treasure yeah. and, and one of the hard things about this time though we're doing the very best we can is the fact that we can't be in the same room with performers so we're missing a little bit the richness of how that sounds 
-hmm. we're all um, limited by the capability of of the technology how how good are, are our individual speakers um, so we're having to we're having to deal with these this like less than perfect situation all the time but I really miss that immediacy and I miss the immediacy of chamber music because uh, while I've had orchestral experiences and and some of them have been astonishing I had a piece at BBC proms last September unbelievable experience and now I think wow I'm so lucky it was last September and not this September because if it was this September I wouldn't be there right. So, uh, but I mostly have, my experiences are in smaller concert halls or smaller rooms with smaller numbers of people. And I, I actually love that. I think that live moment where you're close to the musicians, you're able to hear every detail is, is exquisite. And it's a little bit like listening to, to much of your work where you, the listener wants to be pulled closer so they can hear not only the detail, but the richness that's happening at this level that is often, I think, um, not considered by a lot of music, music being written. It's just, it's sort of, um, it's just not a consideration. It's just not part of the factors. And I think- Yeah, I, I think that's because um, I, I work with harmony so much. I, I harmony and, and is married to, you know, the sound of the instruments as well. And um, when you want to work with harmony, harmony takes time. So my music tends to be a little slower, but it's partly because I really like things that I can be surrounded by or be engulfed in. I want to like have it be experientially surrounding me as a, and have, I want to have time to hear through that as opposed to watching something that's going by me very fast that I can barely hold on to. I'm not good at that kind of thing. Yeah. But I'm very drawn to more, um, that's why I love all the slow movements in the, in the classical repertoire, because there's so much detail and richness in the slow movements. In fast music, we can't hear it. Yeah. So I, or maybe some people can, but I love to have things that are just a little slower so almost like we're slowing time down and we can just expand it and be inside it for a bit. That's, that's really something I just, uh, I love it in music when that happens. Um, and I think that's why, that's one of the things that I come from those slow movements um, very much so. I mean, those are the movements I would play over and over again um, on the record players because I, I just couldn't, if they, in fact, if they, were three times as long those movements, I would have been just as happy just to stay in that world because it was kind of not just a, you know, it wasn't so much that it was a narrative that was unfolding. It was more like a mood that I could sort of dwell in for a while. And this dwelling in a, in a kind of introspective space yeah. is, uh, was something that really made me feel better. Okay. And you know, it was like a it was like for me that kind of music was you know how difficult childhood and teenagehood can be. And all of us have things and for me it was like a like a solace. You know, it was it was a place I could go and it understood how I felt. That's how it felt to me. So I I tend to write music that's more about mood and and harmony um, than it is about like storytelling. I always say there's no one right way to to listen and and so um, I think every piece kind of asks you to listen to it its own way so you, as a listener you might go oh this is really slow this is like why doesn't it get going but yeah. then you make a shift and you go oh this is really slow I can just relax into it a little so it, a lot of it is just finding you know, same thing with fast music. Wow, this is really fast. I can't hold on to it. Okay, let it operate in front of me. Let it just go. And I can admire that and be excited by it. So, you know, each piece is telling us. It's, in, it's inviting us. And we just have to figure out which kind of attention do we bring to bear to this situation. And I think as audience members, we do that all the time. You know, different pieces of music hit us different ways. And when we find, at least what I do, 
if I find I'm not enjoying something too much, I just try to think, well, I wonder what the composer was trying to say here. Let me see if I can get that. Even if I'm not enjoying it, I might be able to understand through listening something about this world, this strange world. You know, that's what new music is. It's always a strange new world, and that's what I love about it. <laughs> you know, almost everything that I get involved in relates in some way. I, I'm also a dancer. Um, I've done a lot of dance in my life, and so, I mean, you can probably tell because I constantly use my hands. I need to sit on them when I talk because I'm always moving them. But um, ever since I was little, you know, if music was playing, I was dancing. So I have this physical relationship to, I love to dance, I love to dance to any kind of music, and I did, I did sort of seriously work as a dancer for a while. Sure. Um, so that's one thing, and I think that might, it's interesting that I, I don't write pulsy dance music though, you know, so, but I, I love, for instance, swimming. I love to swim and I love to slightly float in water that's moving in a gentle way. I, I love that kind of undulation that moves not quite perfectly on a beat, right? So that, that's something I think about a lot. But again, that goes back to music. Um, it's very, that's a very challenging question. I, I mean, uh, we've already come, come across the idea of painting, and I, I've studied painting a lot, and it impacts a lot of my work. Nature. Uh, so I grew up in New York, and I lived mostly in cities, um, but I'm very, very deeply affected by nature. I mean, I try to go by the lake here, walk by the lake. I have a, one of the things I love about living in downtown Toronto is I have a garden. Yeah. So I never had a garden and I have a glorious kind of wild garden. And I'm very inspired by, by nature and by my garden and by the things I've learned in the garden, like the wildness, the fact that all colors go together, oh. the fact that vines love to wind and they will wind in their own way, and that to me is like melody. Um, so yeah, I just, um, I love to just observe it and um, be fulfilled by it. It's a, it's a big inspiration in my life. I mean, you know, that's, that's like Feldman's line, you know, um, how does it go? Man makes plans, God laughs. Man makes music, music laughs. Uh -huh. Meaning, you know, you think you're doing something and you start to set out doing something and then the material just won't go that way. It really requires that you do a whole other thing. And so there's that dance we have with the process and with our material about we think we want to do this, but then you get some material and you have to pay attention to what it really can do. And so there's this... Ad adapting all the time to the reality, just like adapting to the garden. Yeah, I wanted it to grow that way, but it grew that way. It really wants to grow that way. It's growing that way. I can't do anything about it. Okay, now what? <laughs> that's, that's a back and forth conversation with material. Is there anything in particular that you feel sort of is your life as a musician that is something that especially for these composers who are just sort of starting out and these young performers who are just sort of starting out, because you're a performer and a composer as well, um, that you sort of think you have that's the value to contribute to offer them. Well, you know, I haven't met them all yet. I, I guess one of the things I would have said to myself, you know, if I think about myself being young and starting out is, is really just, first of all, try things, try as many things, don't, don't play it safe, you know? So when I, when I started that Young Composers Workshop, what I would often have said to the people who got into the workshop is, now's your chance. Really try something you've never done before because now you have a chance with, to work with this musician and see what that does. Don't, you're not getting graded, you're, you're stepping out as an artist, so Try and try and try. Experiment. Like, really, really get your hands dirty in that way because all of that information goes in into the back pocket for later. So this is the great chance at this stage to really um, 
find out what you want. And I often use the phrase, be greedy, you know, do it for you and, and try to get close to what you really want to do here. Cause I, what I like is to see if I can, even in a short time that I have with people, try to get to who are they really and who are they as artists. And, uh, that's something they're working out at the moment. And well, we're always working that out and that's never done. Uh, so, but that, that approach, if I can instill anything, it's an approach towards, yeah, you know, do it for you. You, you don't have to do it right for me as a teacher or for anybody else, you know. So the, the trying things experimental approach, um, I think, is like, let's be in the laboratory, you know. Let's, it's like every, every visual artist has like 35 things on the cutting room floor before they get the sketch they really want. Yeah. And, and I think in music, we, we too often start from perfection right away. The notation has to be right, and this has to be. Let's see if we can get closer to something you love. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That's, my, that's one of the things I try to bring to, to um, any kind of uh, collaboration with, with composers that I have. Wonderful. Great. That's wonderful. And I really appreciate your taking the time to talk. So... Oh, it's so nice to talk to you. I know you're working really hard. <laughs> and, uh, it's a lot, of, a lot on your plate, especially when it's all through distance. It, it adds a layer of, of uh, labor that yeah. I, I know is not so easy. A different type of effort. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I <laughs> yeah, I know. Don't get too used to it because okay. eventually. <laughs> I don't want to be too used to it. No, no. no. Thank you again. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks for the interesting talk. It was great.